Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So as promised today, we are going to start working on um, this flat card five inch by seven inch um, tag type book. It's, I mean, obviously they're not tags, so it's not a tag book, but I'm just gonna kind of probably call it that just to make it um, easily understandable. So it's these five by seven cards, five by seven with rounded corners. And then I'm going to use a, um, this punch that I have, um, I can't think of what they're called. You guys know what these are. <laughs> Hexagon. Um, and I'm going to fold those in half like this way, not to the points, but to the flat side. And these are going to become my hinges. So I guess we can just call it a hinge journal since... Um, it's not tags, but anyway, so it'll be like, I just need one, you know, you put the hinges in like so, so there'll be two of them on each page and I may use different papers and whatever, but anyway, that's the plan as of now. I've got six of them out. I'm not using the envelopes right now. I may use the envelopes for something I haven't decided. What we're going to do today is like a cover plate for it. So I have this corrugated cardboard. I thought it would be kind of cool to, on the very front one, I wanted to do more of a cover than I did on the last one, um, just because that's what I feel like doing. So I have this piece of corrugated cardboard that we're going to work on as a cover plate today for the, the journal. So how you all doing? I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a good day. It's St. Patrick's Day for me, the day after for you guys. But anyways, I'm so happy St. Patrick's Day, belated. <laughs> One of my favorite days of the year. I love corned beef and cabbage, but I wasn't able to get any this year. My husband can't really eat the beef anyway, but um, sometimes if he has to go somewhere for work or whatever, we'll have corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> Sorry, had to have a drink there. I don't drink, so I'm not into the drinking aspect of the um, holiday, but it is it is a fun one. We used to, when I was growing up, paint the streets green and shamrocks and all over that in the uh, town that I grew up in. So I've just got some regular white Liquitex basic acrylic gesso here, and I'm going to put some of that on here. And I'm going to kind of, I don't know why I put so much on this plate. I'm used to using more, but I want it to be kind of really dry brushed. And this is just a cheapy brush. I think I probably got it at um, Hobby Lobby. Just a, just a cheapy one. And I want it to have that streaky look. That's why I chose this type of brush rather than a nicer uh, brush that would give me a smoother finish, you know. <clears throat> So yeah, we're doing good. Just, um, I've been busy, like I said, this week. I've just been running all over town, basically. I had a doctor's appointment. She's thinking I probably had like, I don't know, some type of osteoarthritis. They're running tests, so I mean, until those that stuff comes back, I have no idea. But um, just a use problem, right? Which obviously makes sense. That's what a lot of us have with this crafting thing. And so... Um, I had to get x-rays and I had to get blood work and then she had me had a prescription for these splints for my arms. Well, I mean, that's great and everything, but they literally went almost to my elbow all the way up to here. Big, huge Velcro and all this stuff. And she wanted me to wear them on both arms as much as possible, like all night. Well, I tried that because I figured if I could at least wear them at night, that would help. But I could not sleep with those things on because I have two of them, mind you, right? And um, so, <laughs> needless to say, that didn't work. So I had to take those back today. And I'm going to just order some, like, thumb spica uh, splint things um, from the internet. And they're, they're just meant to immobilize the thumb. And it'll have a thing that goes around the wrist, but not nearly so bulky and crazy. So I'm just going to paint this on this because I can use it for something else later. I don't want to waste all that. Ah, just so. So, anyways, so I had to take those back today. <laughs> so I've just basically been running all over these last couple of days. I haven't really gotten anything accomplished at home, but it was really nice to, um, be, you know, like I told you guys, just to have that little time to kind of get some stuff done was good. 
So thank you, thank you. You've all been very wonderful in comments and saying, yeah, no worries kind of thing. So that was kind of a cool little design that left. Put that out of the way. And then the other thing I'm gonna do, I mean, this needs to dry obviously, but I'm going to do this before it dries. So I may get some gesso on my glue stick, but I'm not gonna worry about it a whole lot. I can get it off. Um, I'm gonna do some embossing. So I wanna get the embossing powder on here so I can you know, do the whole thing at once so I don't have to keep stopping and starting. So I'm just taking the glue and I'm gonna kinda run it here and there more on the edges than anything. And I know this is an odd way to do it. I'm sure there's a thousand other ways, but um, like I've mentioned before, I don't have one of those Versamark stamp pads anymore because I really don't use a whole lot of embossing powder. So if I get to where I use it more then I might get one, but, and this is also gonna stick wherever the gesso is wet. You just have to have something for it to stick to basically. And this works, I tried it. So works fine for me. <laughs> if there's better ways, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just kind of do what works. I am not a real tool person or, um, you know, have to go buy everything all the time type. I like to just use what I have. So it sticks just fine, see? So that's just gonna kind of maybe give us a little bit of that wood look, you know, like paint and wood and that sort of thing. So I will go and I will get this dried off. This stuff is so fine. I just ordered this one not that long, ah, long ago because I really didn't have a whole lot. Like I said, I don't do a lot of embossing. I used to do more when I made cards, but I still only had a few little things of it, so out of the way get this wiped off and I will be right back okay so I got that all dry and that worked great I did kind of let this um, the glue dry just a little bit when I um, was cleaning off the everything on my mat um you can see the strips the, like you know when you move the glue and it gets the strings <laughs> those got the embossing powder that's kind of crazy all right so another thing, I'm gonna put just some little bits of old book page, and this is just super fragile book page that I have from an old book. You can see it's just like falling apart basically. So I'm gonna use some bits of that, just as another layer. And this, um, like I said, is corrugated cardboard. It literally came from a cardboard box that I cut down, um, you know, it was a whole box, and I just chopped pieces off a roughly the size and then as you know um but you, i mean if you don't know because you've never done it before if you just try to peel that top super thin papery layer off of your cardboard and it can take a while and sometimes i'll use something like um i have this little picky tool where is it that i use to go under the cardboard to kind of lift it a little bit and pull and then you can get a little bit bigger piece. You just got to play with that a little bit and get it to where you want it. That's um, the main trick there. And then um, I tore it around the edges so that it would have that uneven torn look. I didn't talk about that and I thought, oh, you know, some people haven't done it before, so. Oh, and this piece measures roughly because it's got the torn edges four and a half by six and a quarter, four and a half by six and a quarter on that. So that's just kind of a nice size to go on top of that five by seven piece. And these, there's nothing specific here. You're just tearing pieces. It's just to get that, you know, layer of the old book page on there. So yeah, don't have too many exciting stories because I've just really been spending my time kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off, mostly. And yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, yeah, I was like, I'd rather, I think I'll take the pain over those arm braces. <laughs> Because it was just, I mean, I literally, especially with both of them on, you sort of feel like, okay, I can't use my arms at all. So, 
yeah, it was one of those kind of funny things. And I mean, I know you got to immobilize it. I get, I totally, I get it, but like those just weren't going to do it. <laughs> that wasn't going to work. And then I was trying to fold some laundry yesterday, you know, trying to wear them and be good, but it was making this whole side of my arm hurt. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give myself a new, um, pain and all that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem helpful. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a very good patient, honestly, because I just, I'm always like, I don't want to do that, or I don't have time for that, or I forgot, or I, I don't know. I'm just awful. You can ask my aunt. I drive her crazy because <laughs> she's always trying to find things to help me, and I don't forget, or I forget to get them, or I don't take them, or whatever the thing is, because she's given me herbs and stuff to try to help me, and I think that does, those are helping. I mean, some combination of something I'm doing is helping. I'm it's probably helped this week not to do as much of this kind of thing, so all things considered, I guess sometimes you just gotta give them a little rest, too. But, yeah. So next week will probably be quite a bit like this week, and then hopefully things will get a little more back to normal until it gets close to graduation time, because as you all know, my son is graduating high school, and so, yay! And we'll actually probably get to have, like, some sort of get-together or something for him. I mean, we kind of still did out in our yard for my daughter. Um, she had friends come over, and they hung out in the yard um under a canopy thing and then that night they watched a movie outside and stuff during because that was really the beginning of covid when all that went on so hopefully this time will be a little bit better all those poor kids that graduated that year and the year after i'm telling you it just was a bad bum deal for sure. I'm just going to put a little piece over there. And, you know, obviously, as y'all know, some of this stuff is not going to be seen at all. Like, it'll just get covered up. But hopefully the layers will just kind of give it a, a cool look, you know? So, maybe one more. Another one right here. Yeah, I can't believe he's graduating too. It's just nutty. Time just flies. It really does. Enjoy your kids while you got them at home, that's for sure. I'm just going to ink over the top of this a little bit. Yeah, I've been wanting to do some of these, all different ones. I just really like these for the fronts of covers. I struggle with covers. Do you guys struggle at all with covers? Sometimes I um, just really don't know what to do on a cover. And uh, these are kind of great. And I have seen Gail do these kind of things for ever. But I didn't make them really until I did the mushroom one and then I did the fairy one and they're just really it's kind of a good thing because they're pretty flat I mean even though you know it's cardboard so obviously it's a little thicker but I just think it's a good good thing for on top of a journal on the cover even one of these little ones I don't think it'll be hopefully not too crazy and then I cut out a whole slew of flowers and I got these from eclectic eggplant Printables, you can see there. And I don't, I don't know her at all, or whoever does that. But and this is my rabbit from my spring kit. I'm going to be using my spring kit. I think I mentioned that. This is a piece of sewing tissue. But just might give it a little something. And I have no idea. <laughs> we're just going to play here and figure out what in the world we're doing. But I thought spring flowers would be fun with the bunny. 
I like this one because it's got um, strawberries with it. So that might be fun. I'm excited because my little tiny daffodils are starting to pop up out there, which is always very fun. I love spring flowers, spring bulbs. Hyacinths are my favorite because uh, they smell so good. So I'm very excited to see those start popping up here and there. Plus that means spring, you know, and that always makes me happy. <clears throat> Let's see, this is something bunnies love. <laughs> um, two lips, I have a little bigger one cut out. And you wonder why your hand hurts, right? Those are too big. Might get some more tissue. I feel like I'm just gonna cover that all up. I don't know if I want the nest. I'm just, I'm just trying some things. Kind of wanted. No, this is the smaller one. I like the strawberries, but I don't want to cover the bunny entirely. Let's see. Might have to revamp this here. Could kind of cut this part out. Let's see. I just kind of feel like I want the strawberries in front of the bunny and then the tulips behind because, you know, it covers them up so much. So let's see if we can't make it make some sense. I don't know. Maybe not, but we'll see what we can do. So it's just not flowers behind the bunny and nothing else anywhere else. It's always tricky with the edges. <clears throat> These are like so impossible to fussy cut entirely. But then when you cut them like that, then sometimes they look weird. I'm put this behind so you're not really gonna see doing <laughs> putting sideways I know how the bunnies like um what do you call them strawberries hmm I'm not liking it. Let's see. I like this tulip soap sign too, it's kind of cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down because I can always add more of that. I kind of just feel like it needs, you know, another layer back behind there. So that's what I'm gonna put back there. Definitely need more of that, but let's see. Um, doily might be good too. I don't know where to rip these.
get thinking and I can't uh, talk. <laughs> Fingers. I know, I need one of those little, you know, pieces of plastic or something. One of those little spatulas. And I'm going to put a little bit of this under here. I haven't used this in a couple of days. It's like, you want me to do what? Playing loud music. I know you guys can't hear it. Thank goodness. Okay. Need to do some inking. I like the flower garden sign too. Those all came um, with these flowers. The little sayings. nice now that I can lean on my table and not shake you guys. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. Okay. Kind of dingy like that. I've got laces and stuff over here too. You guys probably saw that. That would be another thing we could add for some interest. I want to keep him about here or her. I don't know. It's impossible to tell with bunnies sometimes, even when you own them. <laughs> we thought we had um, two boy bunnies and we quickly learned we did not. So. That was another one of my real brilliant ideas that I got one year at Easter to give my kids. Um, bunnies. <laughs> I mean, it was great for them because they obviously ended up having babies and, um, and it was great for my kids because the mama bunny we had, I would let them out of their hutches. Couldn't do that now. There's too many people living here, but at the time I would let them out to run around and she would go and gather all the stuff to make the nest and um, you know, my kids got to see all of that, all the nest and all the, the babies when they were tiny. And I mean, it was definitely really cool for them. Yeah, I know there's way too many houses and people out here and dogs and, you know, but when I first moved out here, there was like five houses and it stayed that way for a long time. So um, yeah, it was nice and quiet, but the bunnies could run and it didn't, it didn't bug anybody. You know, it wasn't a, a nuisance or anything like that. I want maybe some of these. Those are kind of tiny. Is there another size? There's like giant and tiny. I think I cut out. She has all different sizes um, of them, like, which is nice. I kind of want that blue. That would be one big hyacinth back there, wouldn't it? And whatever's hanging off will either get snipped off or it might be okay if it's within the um, borders of the other piece. I don't know if I want this. I did not set this out first, guys. I didn't set it up. Sometimes I will just so that it's faster, but I just didn't get a chance to do that. You know, figure out the layout first. So this may take me a minute. Two 
to figure out. spring flowers too. It's kind of a neat looking. I like the font on it. Okay. I need to just start sticking some stuff down. <laughs> Keep adding stuff in that. I do like this over here. And I think I will add another piece of sewing tissue like up here because I don't think you're going to see that one really at all. Hardly. Find a piece. I always like to have some of the words and things. Anything you can add to add some, you know, layers and interest is kind of good. As long as it looks right. Okay, I don't want to do it like something like this. We don't need all of this. right here anyway. It calms that pink down a tiny bit too, which I kind of like. Ah. <laughs> the problem of sticky fingers becomes apparent, right? I know, and you guys said, keep some water or something. It's like, yeah, if I could ever remember to do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, a keeper is what I need. Okay, let's put this piece here. Use tacky glue. So I think that will work just fine. But you can use, of course, Fabri-Tac, whatever kind of glue you like the best. And then, do I want this one? Or do I want to do this bigger one and just have it as the back? Yeah, I'm kind of up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll get it together here eventually. I did print these on um, cream colored cardstock, so that's one good thing. But I still like to add a little ink to those edges. I just changed my little foam so it's not wanting to do much without being dipped every time right okay let's get this one all the way down all sticky and then maybe this one I might pop up just a little some of these little guys the only problem is this is not very thick so I'm 
probably going to pop up the middle and maybe glue some of the other parts flat. Just to give it a little dimension, but not um, too much. I'm going to add a little glue to these. These are don't seem like they're sticking very well. I think they'll be fine on the paper once it's stuck down, but just on whatever else I stick it to, I don't want it to come up. just raise it a tiny bit but not a ton. Then it's gonna go about here and I don't know if I like that one that I cut of course. So maybe I'll use the bigger one. I just feel like that bunny needs to be and you know of the strawberries so you can see them. I guess that would work. Just cutting that apart helps so that it's Sometimes it comes so easily, and other times you're just like, I don't know what to do. Kind of like that. I think I need to put the bunny on something to make it thicker. That is one thing I do need to do, I think. Here's the big one. No, I just don't like it. Blue, maybe. And of course, you could stitch some of this stuff too. That would also give you another um, bit of dimension. Okay, let me get the bunny on something thicker, for starters. So I just feel like he's too thin. Okay, I know I have a card or something somewhere here.
Yeah, I should have known this from doing those book collage things at Christmas time. The focal point kind of needs to be on a um, something thick. Okay, I'm going to pause while I cut this out. Okay, I am back. So I did do a little cluster just of lace and fabric just stitched together crazy so that, you know, the bits stick out and the strings stick out and all that. So I think what we're going to do is something like that and then put this over it, something like that. I like the strawberries over there better off to the side. Just so, I just want to be able to see the strawberries. I mean, come on, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're going to put a few um, dimensionals on there. And I've had these ones forever. I, I mean, you can get them at the dollar store. You can get them from probably Amazon or Stampin' Up or who knows, wherever you can find like Hobby Lobby, card making supply type stuff usually. Pretty easy to find. Um, I think I need to cut one in half for that part. So, yeah. But I have also been known to use that foam that I have. So you can use anything that'll just give it a little lift. You could probably even use the like kid foam type stuff. Just glue it on instead of having these already sticky things. These ones just aren't that sticky either. But um, yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy behind there because nobody's gonna see it. I'm just gonna kind of go around these and get some glue near them so that hopefully they'll stay because they're kind of feeling like they don't want to stay which is bothersome you're not even gonna really see that doily <laughs> it's not always the way all right, it's all part of it. I'm just gonna have these kind of hanging out over here. Actually, they might be better off under like this. Yeah. So really, just play around with your pieces and you know, get it to where you like it. I guess is. I never have like a specific plan usually. Unless I've taken the time to do this ahead of time, obviously. Which I did not. So I'm trying to decide. Do I want the bunny? I think on top, or you know, and then this on top of him will probably work the best. We're gonna put more dimensionals on him. I'm trying to decide, I think I wanna just cut the spring off of this because I really love this font, but I don't necessarily want spring flowers. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not really what the whole journal is, is like spring flowers, it's other stuff. Other springy stuff, birds and all kinds of stuff, bunnies. It's all the stuff. And then that way, we can put our word, like, right up there. I think it might need a little bit thicker spot, too. Sorry, you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, she's killing me. No, you guys are awesome. And, of course, you can always fast forward, so <laughs> there's that, right? <laughs> See what it looks like in the end. If you've had enough. But I do have lots of new people. And thank you, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And to all my followers um, who've been with me for long or short amount of times. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are so awesome and so kind. And you always um, leave kind comments. And I love comments and I do answer. So definitely leave a comment. I Like I said, even if you just leave a smiley or whatever it really does help my 
YouTube channel, so I appreciate all of you that comment. You guys are just so awesome. I feel very, very lucky to have all of you. And I do love chatting with you guys. And like a lot of you are on Instagram and talk to me over there, and I like that. It's fun. So I'm Crafty Cat72 on Instagram. 72. Try to keep all the names, you know. Huh. Um at least as close as you can. It's sometimes it's just hard to get your name, you know. I'm sure you all know if you've tried to sign up for whatever, sometimes you just can't get your the what you wanted. But I've tried to keep Crafty Cat something <laughs> something or another uh, for all my different places you can find me. Like when I first went on um, Etsy, there was no, or Crafty Cat was already taken, just Crafty Cat by itself. Ah, like my YouTube name. And so that's how the USA got added. And then we had to add something to Crafty Cat over at Instagram. And I think Crafty Cat USA was taken there or something. I don't remember what the deal was, but anyway. Anyhow. So we got lots of layers here. It's cute bunny. And this. We're going to use tacky glue. And yes, that's a lot, but I want to make sure it stays where I put it. I'm gonna just kind of have this piece twisted under there. I just barely have the bunny under there because I kind of want to be able to see his, like his little tail and that is fun. Trying to get that, I think that's a glob of glue right there. Okay, looking good. I'm liking it. And this I'm just going to kind of tuck under there like I had it. Since we're using the spring digi, that works. To just have spring. And there's stuff right there. <laughs> One of the words on the book page is stuff right there. Spring stuff. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Bench it just a little bit right here. Since it's still a little movable, that'll just make it look a little more interesting. All right, so there is our cover plate, or I don't know what you call these. I mean, um, that's the only thing I can think of to call them is like a cover plate, journal cover plate or something. I'm not sure what other people have called them. I don't want to say a book plate because that's a different thing. So I'm just going to say it's a journal cover plate. And then it will go on one of these. Like so. And then that'll be, you know, it'll open up. So that is that. I hope you enjoyed that. I think you could um, have a lot of fun doing something like this for a uh, spring card too. So yeah, just fun ideas. All right. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and we will chat again on Monday. Love you guys. Talk later. Bye.